Alexa, what's my notification? One new notification. From Amazon Shopping. Sunglasses Visor has arrived. Demery, <laughs> please join me on the camera for this moment of shame. Okay. Well, Internet, today I'm making another YouTube video about 3D printing. And that's because the last YouTube video I made about 3D printing got a lot of feedback. And it wasn't bad feedback, it was very technical, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, we're talking about my shame. I have a habit of maybe having a few too many pickle beers uh, with my friends, or just by myself, that's healthy. And I order things for myself on the internet. And I actually completely forgot about this one because delivery was very delayed. Um, Demery? Yeah? What do you think about my most recent purchase? Oh my god. Wait for it. Oh no. It's good. It's even nicer than I thought. Wait for it. Close your eyes. Are you going to put it on me? Hello. Oh my god. Is it reflective? Yeah. Like sunglasses? Yeah. Do I look good? I'm going to look at myself on the camera. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Well, YouTube, followers, subscribers, this is my shame. And so now for this YouTube video, I will wear this nonsense. So let's talk about printing. Oh my God. It was meant to be. Everybody needs one of these. Welcome back to my home office, and well, I don't work from home anymore, so I guess it's just my home or my room, my lair, my laboratory. Welcome to my laboratory. A few months ago, while I was still working from home, I made a video about 3D printing, and more specifically, nope, it's plugged in, <clears throat> more specifically this, a filament dryer. Uh, I bought a filament dryer, I modified it with a fan, and then I proved to everybody at home that these things are pieces of crap. And what normally happens after we make a YouTube video happened, people left comments, but the comments, whew, can't do that anymore. But the comments people left on this video were a little different. It wasn't the usual, hey, you're stupid, hey, you're dumb, hey, you're dumb, stupid, and ugly. I take offense to that last one. The comments were really long and lengthy and descriptive, and a lot of people who are into 3D printing left me paragraphs and paragraphs about how to fix the problem I was having. So today, we're going to take your advice, or the advice from the internet. We're going to try a couple things to get my 3D printer printing right, and if we can do that, um, something's broken in the bedroom, and I'm going to fix it with this. Let's be honest, lots of things are broken in the bedroom or just don't work as well as they should in the 3D printer. Let's uh, look at the suggestions we got. The first thing we're going to do is level the print bed. The print bed is the flat thing that you print on and it likes to be level. What is that noise? That is not a good noise. So we go in here to maintenance, build plate, and there's a process that we would run on the printer to level. I'm gonna spin this little dial until the nozzle is a millimeter away from the build plate. Seems like a millimeter. Gonna adjust it back in this corner. I'm gonna adjust it back in this corner. Now that we've adjusted it in all three corners, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time with a little piece of paper. I'm going to adjust the build plate until there's just a tiny bit of tension between the plate and my piece of paper. Next corner. Last corner. And we're done. Build plate leveled. The next thing we're gonna do is clean our 3D printer. 
I have printed a lot of different materials without cleaning it. I've run carbon fiber through it. I've run just PLA plastic, all sorts of stuff. This is what we clean it with. It is a cleaner filament. So basically we're gonna tell the machine we're changing out filament. When it does that, it's gonna heat up. And once it's heated up, we're just gonna run this stuff through there until it comes out nice and clean and white and all the different colors of the wood textures and the plastic and the carbon fiber and just all the nonsense is out of there. So cleaning time. Minor technicality, I broke the printer while I was trying to uh, work on it. So we're gonna do a little disassembly and hope it goes back together because I have never taken apart the part I'm about to try and take apart. We have pretty much had to pull out all the stops, but now that this thing is mostly disassembled, eh, we must remove the sword from the stone, the filament from the printer. Ah. Okay, now we can reassemble everything and then re-level everything and then clean the printer out and try this whole thing over again. We have leveled our build plate and we have cleaned out our printer, even though the cleaning of the printer developed into chaos. And now we're gonna do the last thing, which is kind of a big thing. We're gonna change some of the settings for the print. The big thing we're gonna change is top layer and maybe speed. Top layer is how many layers of plastic my printer is actually gonna print on the outsides of whatever I'm printing. When you print something with a 3D printer, it's not completely solid full of plastic because one, that would just wouldn't work well. Two, it'd waste a lot of plastic. And three, it'd probably be pretty heavy for whatever you're making. When you buy stuff at the store made out of plastic, it's not solid plastic. It's usually hollow inside. So side layer is how thick the sides are. And a lot of the comments said I was making my side layer too thin. So I'm gonna play around with the side layer. I might slow the speed down for the printer, and then also I got a comment that I need to increase my fan speed. Fan speed helps with how quickly the plastic cools after you print it. Um, I usually keep my fan speed pretty high, so I'll check to see what it's at and I might tweak that. So yes, we're gonna do some matrix hackery computer stuff. And we're, we're just gonna click some buttons and get an SD card. So I made the top, the bottom, and the sides a little bit thicker. I upped the infill, which is how much stuff is inside of it. I went from 20% filled in to 35% filled in. I turned the temperature of the print head down just a little bit so it prints a little bit cooler. I left the print speed the same, but I did make sure my fans were at 100%, and I think they were at 100% before. So I saved my file to the little SD card, gonna plug it in the printer, and we'll see what happens. It says it's gonna take right about half an hour to print. What do you think? I'm excited to see the final product. I am so confident that is gonna work. We're gonna go start working on our next project right now. Camera? What is it? This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. So we have these curtain rods up here. Mm -hmm. And on the end of the curtain rods are these uh, tiny little hand grenade looking things. They might be pineapples. I think they're hand grenades. But they're super heavy. And one day, one of us, not me, was opening the curtains 
and one of the little hand grenades just ripped right off and the whole thing came falling down. And what happened is there's this little plastic thing that this little metal rod screws into, just like that, that the hand grenade goes on. And it's just a crummy little piece of plastic that snapped. So we're gonna pry this out of here, we're going to measure it, and we're gonna make a new one on the printer. And it's never gonna fall down again. Unless I mess this up, in which case it will fall down again. Step one, get this out of here without destroying the curtain rod. Step two, measure it out. Step three, design a new part. Step four, print. Step five, insert. Step six, do it all again, because I'm probably gonna mess it up. Step seven, success. Who broke this first, me or you? Well, I just opened the curtains. I, I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. I didn't yank them. I feel like you initially did this, and then I put it back up. And then I like pulled it down and hit, hit my head with it next. Oh, second time. Yeah, you open the curtains again and it. Yeah. Yeah. So, fool me once. Shame on you. Mm hmm. Would you like to tell the people at home that our bedroom normally looks like this? No, it never. No, it does not. No. It always looks like this. No, it doesn't. That's exactly what it always looks like. No. So, we are going to use our very crappy, very cheap Harbor Freight calipers. One of these days I'll get some real ones. It is 1.3 inches around the inside. This, basically we just need to make this. And remember, one3 one3 and this. To the computer, let's design. This right here is what I designed to replace the little end cap from the curtain rod. I really just copied what they made. I made it a little beefier and I left a hole in the middle that my metal rod that holds that little hand grenade can thread into. I'm going to use the same settings that I did for that little cap that we just printed out because that worked out really well. I'm gonna load it onto the SD card, plug it in the printer, and then hopefully pretty soon, I don't know, this might take an hour or so to print, we can see if it fits. And for those of you who know a thing or two about CAD and 3D design, you know there's really two types of software. There's nice expensive software made for like engineers or adults, and then there's free software made for children. I do all of my designing in children's software. It says it's gonna take two and a half, maybe three hours to do that print, so I'm probably gonna start editing this video and just assume this is gonna turn out right. See you soon. One minute. It's looking good. Five, four, three, two, one, woo! That was anticlimactic. So in theory, this is only like 200 degrees right now. Well, not too bad. Toasty, ah, toasty. Old broken nonsense. New hotness. See if it works. Whoa, some, somebody made the bed. You ready to see if this works? Yes. You mind holding the camera? Ooh, the other dog has arisen. Here too? All right, we got our pineapple hand. You we recorded the dogs again, weren't you? No. We have our pineapple hand grenades. We have a curtain rod. I think it doesn't matter. I made it the same on both sides, so it fits. It's tight. Could be a little tighter. Let's see if this screws in. Well, that fits. Not too shabby. I think it'll do the trick. Let's uh, get the curtains back on. Are there curtains in here? Yeah. Oh, there's the curtains. Let's put her back up. To recap, as I 
get our curtains covered in dog hair. We learned that uh, all the comments from my last 3D printer video were very helpful, so thank you. Usually, seriously, it's just people calling us dumb or telling Steven how ugly his house is. There's a whole video about that you should watch, just came out a week or two ago. But all the suggestions everyone made worked. All I had to do to get my 3D printer working right was level the bed, clean it out, and change some settings. So thank you, I appreciate all your comments, all your feedback. Feel free to leave a helpful comment or an angry comment on this video. And uh, once this curtain goes up, we're gonna have some privacy in the bedroom again so that no one can see me wearing those stupid sunglasses. I don't know, I don't know how to finish this one. Uh oh. So until next time, don't forget, always listen to what people tell you on the internet and don't order stupid sunglasses. I think I might put some glue in that thing to keep it permanently attached. Yeah, I'm gonna put some glue on it just in case. Maybe just in the cutest thing! You were recording the dogs again, weren't you? Just for a second, but she just did the cutest thing. Uh, we'll put that at the end, after yeah. the end thing. You'll love it. <laughs> she was staring right at the... I'm just gonna